back to the channel guys, uh, we're here with some new content for you. I hope you liked the last video, it was a blast going to uh, DXN and meeting some of my, you know, subscribers, getting new subscribers and just enjoying the whole uh, racing. So, uh, while I was out there, I was uh, kind of in contact with uh, this guy, I was told that there was uh, a dude that was selling all his Tamiya stuff from this group chat of mine, or a friend that put me in his group chat, and anyways, here's the, you know, what we got. And he ended, <laughs> he ended up meeting us, um, and it turned out to be way more than expected. Yeah, this box is actually from the Philippines. Everything is uh, very unique and uh, pretty hard to come by, but this is a, you know, an opportunity I couldn't pass up, especially for the price. Jeez, that was just, uh, that was just, I mean, in the end of the day, this, the bag itself, he told me it was 150 bucks. Um, I spent $300 on all of this. I really don't care about putting prices out there because in, I am into this hobby um, more than just to uh, get prizes out of, but it's uh, kind of a lifelong passion. So if I can get someone's, um, obviously, whole collection like mine for a good price and they're getting out of a hobby, I'll definitely help out and see if that price is worth me you know, putting the money out there for. But this one was worth the money, and thankfully he ended up coming out and meeting with me. Uh, the bag, like I said, was half the, already half the price of what I fully spent. Uh, I think it's so cool because it says on the side here, uh, mini four-wheel drive, done in 60 seconds. So if you guys are car, you know, enthusiasts at all, you know, about the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, right, babe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, pretty stoked about the bag. It's in very good condition. It has a little uh, bunny with the wrench done, uh, done in 60 seconds on the front here, too. Um, what are you checking out? I'll check it out the wrench. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like the Sailor Moon um, uh, yeah. scepter as yeah, well. Yeah, so. yeah, I feel you. Because yeah. the wrench has this kind of moon shape to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on top of this bag, oh yeah, I don't like that noise either. But it detaches, so it can you, you can carry this separately. The brand is apparently uh, DPB 5 0.01. So if you guys know what brand this is, please comment and let me know because, and it has a trademark on here. I couldn't find them. So this bag is pretty cool and I've been wanting something like this and thankfully the guy that, oops, that's crooked. Uh, thankfully the guy that sold me this, you know, he, he got most of his stuff from the Philippines. Um, Anyways, going into the bag now, besides the bag, which is pretty darn cool, um, it came with a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff, since this was his, you know, race bag. Uh, let's start off with this section here. These are a... <laughs> These are a bag of just uh, wheels and extra tires. Um, miscellaneous kind of wheels and tires and these are all unopened uh, parts but they're not real Tamiya parts they're from the Philippines uh, so they're obviously not authorized dealer Tamiya stuff can't use it in Vegas racing or some un other um, organizations I'm sure they won't allow you to use these parts but for the backyard races and uh, some other venues, I'm sure it'll just be fine. Came with some really cool pink Fujitsu's. 
look kind of beat up, but good for testing batteries, right? Yes. Yeah, we need yes. we need more testing batteries. That is true. Yeah. Um, you want to dig in here and, yeah. and, and bring out what's in there, babe? Ooh, I don't know what it is. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, it's um, another, it's a parts uh, case, little parts case. Superior performance is assured by Tamiya, it says on here. Anyways, you guys know what this thing it holds. It holds all your screws, bolts, miscellaneous accessories. Um, has a lot of flathead screws in there, so that's pretty darn cool. Um, and what else? There's a lot of the carbon fibers. Oh, cool. Stuff as well, too, and some of the tools. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so we got here um, a hex wrench and a really nice drill, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and like uh, Robbie was saying, here's a lot of extra carbon fiber and FRP pieces that were in there. Uh, here's one more drill. Some more carbon fiber FRP pieces. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh no, there's still, there's still more carbon fiber in here. Oh, because of my, my thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in the way. I thought so. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm here. <laughs> okay. And a little small one too. Yeah, there you go. All right, so it's a good amount of carbon fiber. I'm sure, like I said, it's not all true to me on parts, but when you get down to the nitty gritty of things, making angle plates, uh, rear tail sections and whatnot, I feel like it doesn't need to be truly real carbon, I mean, truly real to me parts. Um, I can't even be sure that these are fake or not uh, until I drop a motor um, shaft in one of these holes and see if it's loose or tight. So anyways, besides that, let's uh, go into the other... I found uh, Oh, you found... Oh, wow. Okay, well, Rob, you found another weight and a... Plastic, green plastic washer. <laughs> yeah, and then I think I found a, a rat poop in there too, so I threw it away. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh jeez. Ew. Yeah, ew is right. You gotta sanitize. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do that. Um, moving on. We have here some other cool things. This is uh, probably one of the more interesting pieces that came with this. It is a motor break-in. So you plug this into the wall, obviously, right? Um, and there's supposed to be a lead plug that plugs into this blue thing here. And it has the two, um, well, the two leads for the motor on each side. And you can adjust on this small, your voltage of how much you want to break in the motor at what voltage. You can come over, babe. Yeah. Um, but the problem is uh, when the when I got the bag, I looked through everything, but I, it was so dark and late. I could I didn't see that he didn't have the leads in here. So I need to go and to like um, I don't know electronic store and figure that out. But I'm very excited to have the main unit itself because, well, I don't have a break-in station other than a uh, homemade one. Uh, I came with also a BT1680E battery tester. I thought it was broken, but it actually does work. Very pleased. 3.26, 2.21, I'm amazed these batteries even have some voltage still in there. Oh, 1.21, sorry, half. Um, what is that? This will be, uh, what is this called? It's, it's basically, it charges your, your battery as well, too. Yeah, yeah, this is another uh, cool thing, thing on Bob that I already have, too. Um, it's a Sky RC charger. 
If you're getting into the hobby, I told you this before, it's probably one of the least expensive and most accurate chargers to get. Uh, now I have two of them, which is great. Yay. Um, can't, can't go wrong with this charger. It uh, has a uh, discharge mode and obviously it has a charge mode, but they have on here what's really cool is called a refresh mode. So when you're done beating on your batteries after a race, weekend and whatnot, you put them in and it takes a good amount of time for it to refresh your batteries, but it really, um, it really uh, takes the battery and gives it a longer life than if you did re do the refresh because it builds up resistance inside the battery. So my big suggestion is refresh your batteries uh, after every big race. And what else do we got in here? Let's see. Got some just some little random things. Okay, yeah. clips and stuff. Alright. Well let's move on to the other side. Other side. Other side of the room. Huh. Yeah. Cool. And uh, what do we got here? Got some Plastic underguards for the front. Um, this looks like a NA chassis that is cut up. Yeah, it's a cut up NA chassis. So if I want to do an NA build, I already have a chassis that's cut. Um, some purple stabilizers. Piece of, just other plastic uh, variant of pieces. So that's pretty much it for the side pockets and front pocket. Let's uh, get into the main event, which is right down with Tanner. Um, you wanna unzip one? I unzip the other? Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, you good. <laughs> and there you have it. It is a... <laughs> oh, man. It's a very nice unit uh, to hold the cars. I'm really stoked that it's red on the inside. That, that really got me. So let me put this more in front of you guys to see. Um, so, obviously that this was way worth the price, in my opinion. It, you guys comment and tell me if you think it was or wasn't, but I got here one car that is an open class that can be, okay, roll away from that. <laughs> uh, two cars that, that are open class. I got a two class car that can be revised very easily. Another two class. And another two class. And with those are just the modified ones. Uh, he had three other vehicles or little machines here that actually are very rare. I a lot of you guys like the Brock and G. Here's a Brock and G, black and red chassis. Um, as Robbie keeps picking them up and putting them down. <laughs> this is a white MA chassis, which is a Thundershot MK2. Um, this one is a uh, Carp Hiroshima, uh, Toyo Carp car. Uh, comes with a red and black MS chassis, pretty limited edition. Um, but overall, what is the attraction here are the parts, because these cars can be what re reassembled, right? Taken apart and reassembled. Yep. Um, both of the MS chassis came with uh, already suspension and. I mean, you can't get knockoff MSL chassis, I don't believe, but, uh, yeah, a lot of these cars are well worth 
just the parts alone. Which one are you looking at over here? I'm looking at one of the two, uh, two class cars. This one has a Robo race sticker right behind the chassis. Oh yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Uh, the Robo race. Oh. Yeah, apparently the Robo race. I just learned about this uh, recently. It is uh, been a popular thing uh, for a while. It is an option you have to send your machine into whatever uh, race that is going on. Uh, you just have to have a sealed container or an enclosed case that will protect the car. You send in your car to the hobby store, like let's say DXN Provisions. I'm not sponsoring them, I'm just saying they are the ones that I've heard that do this very often. and. They will set your car up for you as far as the brakes and if it needs tape. Uh, and then sticker your car with this uh, kind of sticker here that says Robo Race, like Robbie pointed out. And they'll race your car, run it. Uh, if you qualify and you end up winning, you actually win and you collect your. Uh, prize at the end of the race, they'll send it to you. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, it gives an opportunity to people who want to compete with others and, you know, don't have the option to travel, but you can make your little, to me, it's travel. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> um, but yeah, these, uh, this is another one here of the MS chassis. It's more of the one that's together-ish, but I'm still gonna be taking it apart. All these are gonna be rebuilt um, in one way or another because great parts just needs more attention to detail. Um, this is a green MSL already has suspension on it and I mean to be honest suspension works pretty good but the rear stay and front stay um, actually are sliding damper style but we're not put together properly so they don't slide um, anyways besides the point of uh, the cars being put together uh, the way they work, I feel like uh, the collection of parts overall you guys see here, I think is well worth more than $300. Um, and this isn't uh, the only thing I came back from LA with. Uh, I was so thankful and lucky enough to uh, meet the legend himself, Matt Tang. Um, He's uh, very, I got asked by a couple uh, followers of mine how he is a person, like, you know, just in general to talk, and he's super chill, like, really humble, down to earth. Robbie got to talk to him a little, meet him. It was really cold, so she sat in the car, so. Yeah, it was really, really cold outside. Yeah, but, like, even the short amount of time uh, she got to talk to him, uh, he, l he let us in to use the restroom. He was very, very humble, very nice guy. He has a beautiful uh, display of parts. Uh, and he's really taken this hobby to the next level. It doesn't, it's not just to me of parts anymore. It's like a, a piece of art. Once you get uh, most of his parts on your car, it turns to, you know, like another level of uh, a race car but besides the point of his parts him as a person great dude very humble uh, and uh, thank you for your hospitality um, thank you. <laughs> uh, but yes uh, while we were there I couldn't resist obviously of not buying some uh, parts from him and <laughs> And yeah, so I, on top of getting all of this, this was the day after actually. I got all this the day after. It was on a Saturday night that I picked this up. 
the guy, I was surprised that he even hit me up. It was last minute. So this was kind of just fell in my lap situation and I am overly appreciative of it. Uh, this is one of these things I'm gonna be making a follow-up video of because it is very hard to get at the moment from uh, Jonathan, AKA Mad Tang. And he, uh, well, I'm dropping parts left and right over here. Anyways, I would like to do a one video, uh, I guess, review slash just go through so you, so you guys can see how beautiful detail he puts into his work. It's not just to make money or to, uh, I guess you could say, have the most expensive cars, but it's to have the best functioning machine. In the end of the day, you put so much effort into these vehicles, and yes, it is a pride to make your own chassis, and yes, there is a big pride into uh, doing everything yourself. Believe me, I have all my cars that are in these boxes, I have done myself, and I've only raced cars, um, recently I would say that I have built when I was in Italy I raced a car that I did not build and I won second place with and to be honest it did not feel as great as if I would have won with a car that I built um, we're gonna pull this aside for a minute because it's not a big deal it doesn't need to be zipped up and we don't need to take all this away but I'm just going to be showing you guys here it is a little uh, one of those animal racers. It's the uh, yeah, it's the fox guy, wolf guy. Yeah, it looks like the DXN wolf guy. Um, yeah. He hooked me up with that for uh, a freebie just because I went with so many parts of his. This is a custom MS uh, chassis plate uh, for the underneath. Uh, a lot, I ended up getting a lot of the 25th anniversary um, Korea parts just because, would you like to hold some? Yes. I'll give you these that I'm not ready to tuck in my tits. Yes. I got a lot of these uh, 25th anniversary Korea parts because, I mean, if, if you guys know and you're in the game, even if you're not, and you go online to find these, you're not. Because they're sold out or they're just, well, sold out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I then was searching around and I've been wanting to get myself uh, these lightweight double rollers, but they're a nine, they're eight, a nine and an eight millimeter roller. It, and he had two different uh, finishes. He had a silver and a black. And he was like, which one do you want? I'm like, I'll take both. What do you mean? <laughs> so I got both just because they're really hard to come by as well. These are some HG carbon fiber rear plate sets for the, uh, it's the pivoting for the MS chassis or pretty much any open class bar. So I don't have to cut my own. Uh. And the last but not least is this really cool fluorescent um, FMA chassis. I don't know, it just screamed out to me to buy, and I was like, okay, I'll buy you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I got that. Uh, oh, and these. These, these are stickers. stickers from him. Mr. Jonathan has some cool stickers, <laughs> as in his videos. You got Waggle, you got Passion, uh, Mad Concepts, Dash 4WD, some really cool little ones here. Uh, definitely gonna be popping those on some of my cars. And I think that's about wraps up everything I brought back, other than what I'm gonna be talking about separately in the next video, so keep your eyes open for that. And please, you know, you guys see all this effort I go through for, for you guys, this is all for you. It's not just for me. Because, yeah, I have fun with this stuff too, but I don't have to go through this. 
it's uh, I do all this to make an adventure out of it so I could come back to you guys and uh, well tell you what's up give you an adventure something to watch so please subscribe like and comment. Uh, yeah, just hit that button. It's free. And, you know, it really helps me out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, besides the point of all of this, we had a great time in LA. And, and this. And this. Oh, of course. I mean, oh, oh, oh. we had a great time in LA. And uh, the racing at DXN was absolutely epic. That wall part of the track was pretty gnarly. Oh, yes. Um, I believe there was maybe out of all the open class races maybe only two or three of the races all three of the cars finished uh, but it was uh really cool vibes really cool people really cool um racing and overall a good experience to go back there again because i don't know if i'll be able to make it back uh before we move to greece uh, so it might be the, the last time, maybe. I'm not sure. That's just a possibility. We might be moving, uh, you know, before being able to go back. So, um, anyways, this is pretty much it. You know, we got uh, a nice uh, haul back to the bay, and uh, it's. All of this is going to be uh, rolling into another video of rebuilding cars um, and, you know, putting out more content. And because I am so close to 500 followers on my Instagram, I'm going to throw this out there right now. Keep an eye out and keep an ear open because I will be giving away a ms chassis msl chassis that i cut myself and believe me it functions great uh so it's going to be a msl chassis possibly a box a tamiya box uh and this msl chassis will be coming with springs screws and a pair a uh, pair a set of trimmed wheels and tires so, well, trim the tires uh, with carbon wheels. So, keep an ear open. I will be uh, hitting that 500 follower mark most likely by the end of this week or the beginning of next. Meaning, I'll be putting out there on my social media, which is Instagram, keep a level mini four wheel drive. Um, that, you know, directions on how to get into the giveaway and how to go about it. So, yeah, just want to let you guys know, finally I'm getting around to doing a giveaway. I'm so excited. I was my first one and I'll be here, you know, big help. She's been an absolute wonder with that camera of hers because without her filming the races while I'm doing my thing, uh, we wouldn't be hitting this counter follower mark. We wouldn't be uh, slowly uh, procrastinating. No, that's not what we want to be doing. Well, we wouldn't be slowly gaining momentum with this channel. So thank you, babe. Thank you, and you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, so after all this talking, we're gonna run some cars to end the video and. Thank you again for you know being a subscriber or if you are just you know watching for your first time please subscribe and have a good time building have a good time racing but always remember it's an adventure and it's never going to go smoothly so check these cars out Bye.
of rear brake, like the slightest little bit of rear brake. <laughs> uh, that's funny. You, you. All right, guys, that's it. <laughs>